بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الأمين العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآل الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الرحمة وأكرمني بنور الرحمة اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانفر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Alhamdulillah, we are able to continue our study of logic. Tonight, we will study, inshallah, two lessons. One is about further classifications or divisions of idea, proposition. And second, about the relation between two propositions. You remember, we said that whenever we have a preposition or qadiyya, it can be hamliye or shatiye. It can be like a statement. You have mawdu and mahmu, subject and predicate. Or it can be shatiye, conditional. You say, if P, then Q. If this happens, another thing happens. Or if this happens, another thing doesn't happen. It can be uh, their existence, which are conditional upon each other, or it can be existence of one, one of them and an existence. There are different types. So we said, any preposition is either hamliye or shartiye. Okay. We also said each of these two can be salibe or mujebe. Salibe means it's negative. Mujebe is affirmative. When you say A is B, this is mujebe. But if you say A is not B, this is salibe. Or if you say if P, then Q, this is Mujibah. But if you say, it's not that if there is P, there would be Q. This is Salib. So this is another classification which you are familiar with. Now we want to go further and see how logicians classify al qadiyat al hamliya statements. How they classify qadiyya hamliya not, of course, with two salib and mujib, that is already known. Another classification. They say sometimes subject or mawdu is one individual, what we call juz'iya haqiqi, means something that cannot be applied to more than one. Like Zaid, Amr, Bak, yeah, different people, different things, not a concept which is universal. No, a particular person, a particular instance, case, individual, a city, for example, it can be a person, Zaid Ambak. It can be, for example, a particular horse which has name, not about all the horses or, you know. So, sometimes subject is means really one person, one particular instance. Sometimes it is kulli. It's a universal concept. For example, if I say, Allama Tabatabai is the author of Bidayatul Hikmah. Subject is Allah Metabatabai, and this is one person. So this Qadiyya is called Qadiyya Shaksiyya. So remember this terminology, Qadiyya Shaksiyya. This is a proposition which is about one particular case. Okay? Allah Metabatabai. Or we say, for example, uh, 
Rome is an ancient city. This is again Qadiyya Shaksiya because Rome is named for one particular city. I am not talking about cities in general or about Western cities or Italian cities, you know, ancient cities, because these are all universal. But I say Rome is one city. So this is called Qadiyya Shaksiya. In history, in geography, we many times have this type of Qadaya. But in physics, in chemistry, in maths, in many sciences, we don't deal with such Qadaya. In philosophy, in theology, except if, for example, we are talking about God in particular. Because even in philosophy and theology, many times we talk about God as Wajibul Wujud, which is Kulli. Do you remember? We said concept of wajibul wujud necessary being is kulli although it has only one case but the concept is kulli so in most of the sciences we don't deal with qadaya shakhsiya in history geography yes if the subject of the proposition is kulli it's a universal concept again here it's divided into two parts Sometimes the concept as concept is meant. So you are talking about this concept as such. Sometimes the concept is used as a way to reach its instances. Okay? So there are two ways. Sometimes Sometimes It's like, you know, sometimes you take a glass. Look at the glass. You look at the glass, the material, everything, the design. And sometimes you look at things through glass. Yeah? So glass for you is most of the time not something that independently you look at it. Even many times you may forget that you have your glasses on. Because the glass as such is not important. It's a way to look at things. But for the one who is buying glass, selling glass, making glass, the glass itself is important. Keeps looking at the glass. Maybe he doesn't need glass himself. Keeps looking at the glass. Okay? So these are two different ways of considering something as an object or as a means. Yeah. Sometimes you look at something as an object, sometimes you look at something as a means to look at something else. Uh, we have this about dunya also. <coughs> Amir al-Mumin says, Man absara ilayha, whoever looks at dunya, only focuses on dunya, a'amathu, dunya makes him blind, because you are not able to see anything. If you are looking at dunya, then you cannot see anything. But man absara biha. But if you try to look using dunya, not looking at dunya and becoming focused on dunya, use dunya as a way to understand other things, basaratho. Quran will give you actually vision, dunya will give you vision, will give you lots of insights. So are you going to look at something and remain focused on it or you want to use it as an object to look other things better? So. When it comes to the concept of kulli, sometimes we only consider the concept, not individuals. And sometimes we use the concept what we want to look at the individuals. Let me give you two examples for each of them, one example. 
when I say al insanu nawun, al insanu nawun, human being is a no. You remember we had five types of kulliyat, yeah, kulliyat khams. One was no, and no is when you refer to the whole reality of something, the whole essence. Al insan nawun. Which insan is no? Me and you? No. The concept of insan is no, which is in mind. Yeah? We are not no, we are instances. Or when you say al haywan not jensun. Haywan is gens, animal is a genus. This is the kulli of haywan, which is in the mind. Okay, so when philosophers talk about concepts normally, or logicians, normally they talk about concept as such. But if we say human beings eat, drink, walk, die, which human beings? The concept of human being or individual human beings? Kulli yul ensan. He's not eating or drinking or dying. You understand? You know, for you, these things may look, you know, not important. So, you know, why, you know, we are talking about these issues. But these are very important issues because these are the ways that you can train your mind to function and reason properly. If you are not familiar with these differences, then when you speak or you argue, you mix them up. We are making our mind familiar with subtle differences so that you are very familiar with the way you use these concepts for arguments or if you study other people's arguments. So, I repeat, the subject of preposition is either juz'i or kulli. Juz'i means one person, one case, one instance, like Allah like city of Rome, one. Or it is kulli. When it is kulli, it's either kulli by itself important for you. You are looking at the kulli, focusing on the kulli, concentrating on the kulli as a concept. Like al insanu nu'un al haywanu jensun. Or you are using kulli, but you want to reach its instances. You say, human beings die, human beings eat, drink, and so on and so forth. So there are two types. The first type is called al qadiyatu tabi'iyya. al qadiyatu tabi'iyya. Tabi'i means natural. But the reason they call it tabi'i, because it's talking about kulli tabi'i. Is talking about a concept which is universal as such. Okay? Al Qadiyatu Tabi'i. Then, if it is about individuals, it can be divided further. Either the quantity of subject is mentioned or it is not mentioned. Sometimes they say all A is B. Sometimes they say some of A is B. Sometimes they keep silent. They don't say all or some. They don't say anything about the quantity. If a proposition is coming with a subject which is kulli and instances are meant but the quantity is not mentioned it is called al qadiyatul muhmala it's muhmala it's ambiguous it's vague because it hasn't mentioned for example someone says human beings are writers all of them, some of them, he doesn't say anything. 
It says human beings are writers. This is called Qadiyya Muhmale. In sciences, this type of Qadiyya is not used because a scientist, a scholar should speak with measure. You cannot just say human beings write. How many? All, some. You have to say something. So, if the quantity is not mentioned, it is called muhmal. If the quantity is mentioned, it is called mahsura. Mahsura. Means it has borders. Means it has become, you know, clearly defined. Mahsura. Hasr means to exclude. Mahsura means there is a border. You know, like you make a wall around your home. So you are protecting your home. al qadiyatul mahsura is when you mention the quantity, so it is protected. It's not vague. Either you say all or you say some. But you mention the quantity. So, al qadiya is either shakhsi or it's for colleague, which by itself is tabi'i or muhmale or mahsure. Mahsure can be kulli or juz'i. If you say all, they call it kulli. If you say some, they call it juz'i. Again, it can be mujabe or salabe, as we had before. Therefore, question, how many type of, types of mahsura we can have? Four. Mahsura can be four. Because it's mahsura, mujabe or salabe, and also kulliya or juz'iya. So we'll have four. Al-mujabatu al-kulliya. الموجبه الجزئيه الصالبه الكليه الصالبه الجزئيه الف is there like a is b this alif should be a particular thing like we say allama tabatabai is the author of mizan or rome is an ancient city this type of qadaya, as I said, are used in history, in geography, but not in most of the sciences. In empirical sciences, in intellectual sciences, we don't deal with this qadaya, because these are very specific. If it is not shakhsiye, then if it is not shakhsiye, means the subject is kulli. It's divided into two types. Sometimes the subject is kulli bima huwa kulli. It's a universal concept as such. You look at the kulli as a kulli, as a concept. Okay? In other words, Kulli is ma fihe yonza. You look at the kulli itself. Like you say, al insano no on. Insan is kulli, and here we are concerned about the concept of insan, which can only be found in our mind. We are not talking about Zaid Amr Bakr. We are talking about kulli. But sometimes we look at kulli bima lahu afrad. We look at kulli as it has instances. Our concern is those instances, those cases of kulli. Like when we say al insan yamshi. Human beings walk, human beings eat. 
So our concern is about not the concept of insan which is kulli. We use the concept but in order to reach individuals. Okay? This is called al qadiyyatu tabi'iyya. At tabi'iyya. Because you are talking about the nature, about the essence of kulli. But this can be further divided and then takes different names. When you are talking about kulli, but your main purpose is it's individuals, then a big question comes about which individuals, which instances, all of them or some of them, or it is ambiguous. If it is ambiguous, it's called al qadiyatul muhmala. al qadiyatul muhmala. Like what? You just say al insan yakul. Human beings eat. You don't say all or some. This is muhmala. Means. It's not clearly, specifically defined. It's way. If you mention the quantity, it is called al qadiyatul mahsura. Al mahsura, like kullu insanin yakul. Or Ba'dul Insane Yaktub. All human beings eat, or some human beings write. This is called Al Qadiyatul Mahsura. Okay? Because it has an indicator of quantity. Al Qadiyatul Mahsura by itself can be divided into four types. Maybe I write it here so that you can have. So, al qadaya or al qadiya al mahsura. It's either salibe or mujiba. If it is salibe, it's either kulliye. Or juziye, mujebe also kulliye, or juziye. So you have as salibatul kulliye, as salibatul juziye, al mujebatul kulliye, al mujebatul juziye. So whenever you hear al mahsuratul arba. They mean these four. Al Mahsuratul Kulliya or Juziya and each of them Mujiba or Sadiba. So now let's find examples for them. Al Mujibatul Kulliya. Like what? Kullu insanin haywan. كل إنسان حيوان اسم موجبة كلية كل إنسان all human beings are animals because إنسان is حيوان ناتج so كل إنسان حيوان الموجبة الجزئية بعض الحيوان إنسان some animals are human beings some are not. Horse is animal, is not human being. Yeah? So, ba'adul hayyuane insa. Is it correct or not? Salibiyya kulliyya. Laysa shay'un min al insan bihajar. No human being is a stone. No human being is horse. 
This is Saliva tool. Kulia. Ba'azul haywan laysa bi insan. This is Salibiyya. Juziyya. Ba'azul haywan laysa bi insan. So you learned all the four types. Mujibatul kulia, Mujibatul juziyya, Salibatul kulia, Salibatul juziyya. Yes. Is there a quantification for the all or the sum? Pardon? Is there a quantification of the all or the sum? If it's all, it's 100%. If it's 99.5, then it becomes sum. Anything less than 100% is sum. Sum can be 1, can be 99. Actually, you have to remember, when you say sum, even if it is 100%, as still sum is true, but it's not meant. Yeah? For example, if I say Ba'adul Insane Haywan, this is not wrong. When I say some human beings are animals, it's not wrong because. We say, We are saying some of them are animals. We didn't say the rest are not animals. <laughs> okay? So, in logic, when you confirm something for some instances, it doesn't mean that the rest are not. If I say some human beings are animals and some are not animals, this is wrong. But if I say some are animals, means with respect to the rest, I am silent. Maybe I am still inquiring. Maybe I am investigating. Maybe I don't want to touch the rest. Yeah? So, when you say some, it doesn't mean that it has to exclude. means we are concerned this much. I am talking this much. Okay? So, al mujaba kulia or juziya, saliba kulia or juziya. These are called al mahsuratul arba. There are four types of mahsura. So, what is qaziya mahsura? Is the proposition that the concept of a kulli is subject. We are concerned about its instances. And we have identified the quantity. Okay? This call or bar that explain the quantity has a name. Do you know what's the name? They say Sur. Sur. Sur al Qadiyah. With Sin, not Sad. Sur al Qadiyah means the term that identifies the quantity. So when you say kol or bar is identifier. And sometimes can be the structure. For example, I say laysa al insan bihajar or laysa shay'un min al-insan bihajar. There is no kol or juz. But you know, nakare in siyaq al-naf tufidul umum. When you say, in a negative sentence, when there's a negative sentence, and then you bring a noun, this shows generality. When you say ليس شيء من الإنسان بحجر means none of human beings are a stone. You don't need to say all. This by itself shows that it is general. When you say none of them is this, it shows generality. Okay. There is another classification 
which Ayatollah Mutahari mentions only, but he says you can find it in more detailed books. As you know, we are just in the elementary level. This is introduction to logic. And inshallah, we will have after this an intermediate course. So here, he doesn't mention that much, but he just mentions the name. Maybe I also mentioned the name so that it is a, you know, there in your mind that you have a kind of history with it. Sometimes preposition is divided into ma'dula and muhassala. Ma'dula and muhassala. I give you example. I don't explain it further because it's not for this stage. But just to remain in your mind, inshallah. Al-Qadiyatul Ma'dula is when the predicate has a negational element. For example, you say Hadha Rajul Qayru Alim this man is a non-scholar. If you say this man is not a scholar, this is salibe. But if you say he is a non-scholar, so instead of making salibe, you can put negation inside the predicate. Like you say, he is an unhuman, instead of saying he is not a human. Okay? This is called ma'dula. Ma'dula means negation is inserted inside the subject or predicate. But muhassala means it's free from negation. The subject or predicate has no. You understand? So you can have mujibah. But also ma'dula. So qaziyah is mujibah. A is B. But B is non-C. Not non-C. <laughs> non-C. Okay. <laughs> so. Just keep it in your mind for future, inshallah. The next division is. Again, we just mentioned this, but we leave it for future. It's very useful, especially in philosophy, this next one. Sometimes, in addition to the subject and predicate and the indicator of kol or joz, mujebe or salebe, we have modality for preposition. Modality. Jahatul qadiyya. For example, we say something has this quality. Bidharura. For example, Allah mawjudun. Zaydun mawjudun. But there's a big difference. Allah mawjudun bidharura. Zaydun mawjudun bil imkan. One is necessary, one is contingent. Okay? So, if you speak very generally without deep philosophical understanding, you say Allah mawjudun, Zayd mawjudun. But if you look at it carefully, there's a big difference. Allah mawjudun and existence is necessary for you. But Zayd Mawjudun, but Wujud is not necessary. Zayd can be existent and can also stop being existent. So, Bil Imkan. So, this Bil Darura, this Bil Imkan, or Bil Imtana, sometimes Bil Imtana, Shari Kul Bari, 
غير موجود بالضرورة or موجود بالامتناع A partner for God necessarily cannot exist or impossibly exist. Okay? Impossibly exist or necessarily does not exist. These are called modalities. Jahatul Qadiyya. Jahat is different from quantity. It's different from salibir mujibir. Yeah? It's about the nature of relation <coughs> between subject and predicate. Whether it is zaruri, whether it is mumkin, whether it is mumtana. And then each of them has different also subdivisions. Wajib bizzat, wajib bil ghair, wajib bil qiyasa ila al ghair. All these things. Okay? So prepare yourself, inshallah, for the next course. Because, inshallah, we are going to have serious discussions. Okay? Eat properly, do exercises, <laughs> study properly. Inshallah, we have serious discussions to come. Right now, we are just warming up. Thus, we are introducing the concepts. Okay. Then, we have another lesson. It's called Ahkamul Qadaya. Ahkamul Qadaya. You remember when we had discussion about the relation between two concepts. How many relations can be between two concepts? Four. And Nesabul Arba. There are four relations. What are those four? At Tasawi, At Tabayun, Al Umum Al Khusus Al Mutlaq, Al Umum Al Khusus, Menwaj. Sometimes we say they completely cover each other, they are equal. Tasawi. Yeah? Like Ensan and Haywan and Atiq. They are mutasawi. Sometimes they are totally separate. Like insan and haja. Separate. Sometimes one of them is bigger. Includes the other one and has extra. Like haywan and insan. This is called al-ubumu wal khusus Al-mutlaq. And sometimes they overlap. Like al-insan. And for example... Tall. Some human beings are tall and some are not tall, and some things which are tall are human beings and some are not human beings. We have animals which are also tall, we have buildings which are tall. Okay? So, two concepts we said there can be four relations between them. Remember? Now, we want to see the relations between prepositions. But logicians are not concerned that much about all propositions. Because if you want to discuss about all propositions would be too much. The propositions whose subject and predicate are the same. What? The propositions whose subject and predicate are the same are divided into four parts. There are four types of propositions whose subject and predicate are the same. Okay? So like Nesabe Arba'e between two concepts, here also we have four types but these are not for all prepositions. Only the prepositions that have the same subject and predicate. So it means they are hamliye and also not any hamliye. Those hamliye that subject and predicate are the same. Okay. Please listen very carefully. Okay. Very carefully because... It might be a bit difficult. Sometimes the relation between two prepositions whose subject and predicate are the same is what we call at-tanaqud. 
there is contradiction. They are contradictory. And there is contradiction between them. And this is when they have different cam and different kaif. Means, with respect to being mujabe or kulliye, they are different. And with respect to being mujabe or salibe, are also different. For example, mujabe kulliye and salibe juziye. They are contradict each other. If you, even you refer it to your mind, you will find it. You know, for example, if I say, Kullu insanin haywan. What statement, what proposition can contradict this? If I say, Kullu insanin haywan. What can contradict this? This is not contradiction. Both are correct. Kullu insanin haywan, ba'dul insanin haywan. There is no contradiction. No. Subject and predicate are the same. If I say, Kullu insanin haywan. And then I say, Ba'dul insanin laysa bi haywan. This is contradiction. If I say Kullu insan in Haywan, and then I say Ba'dul insan in Laysa bi Haywan, all human beings are animals, and then I say some of human beings are not animals. This is contradiction. What does it mean they contradict? It means that if one of them is true, the other one is false. And if one of them is false, the other one is true. Please remember, two contradictory prepositions cannot be both true or both false. If one is truth, with truth is true, one is false. If one is false, the other is true. Always from truth of one, you understand the falsehood of the other or vice versa. Is it clear? So... In order to have tanaqud, what should we have? Al-ikhtilaf fil kam wal kayf. One has to be mujibe, the other one has to be salibe. And also, one has to be juz'i, one has to be kulli. If I say, kullu insan in haywan, and Ba'zul insan laysa bihiwan. This is contradiction. Also, if I say Ba'zul haywan insan and laysa shay'un min al haywan bi insan. Again, this is contradiction. If I say some animals are human beings and then I say none of animals are human beings, this is contradiction. So please remember the naqiz. For al mujibatul kulliya is what? As-salibatul juz'iyah. And the naqis for as-salibatul kulliya is al mujibatul juz'iyah. This is very important. I don't know why you are not excited. This is very important. <laughs> <laughs> because many times people make mistakes. You know, when they make reasoning and arguments from one they shift to the other without knowing these relations okay so the first is at tanakos yes yes yeah here there is problem but you are not in need of going that further so that they cannot be together. And the result of this is when you say, Kullu insan haywan, 
and there is no insan who is haywan, so they cannot be both true, but because you have gone that further, then there is something in the middle that that can be true. So from truth of someone, you understand the falsehood, but from the falsehood, you don't understand the truth because there can be something in between. <laughs> you know, for example, if someone says, Kullu haywanan insan. And Laisa Shayun Min Al Haywan Ibn Insan. Both of them are wrong. Oh, so one has to be. Ah, so it's not Mutanaqiz. Because in Mutanaqiz, one has to be true if the other is false. So if you make both of them Kulli, then there is a chance that both of them are false. Okay? So, Mutanaqiz or contradictory is when. You have two propositions, the subject predicate are the same, but they have difference in both kam and kaif. We mean by kam, kulli juz'i, by kaif, mujibe salib. So it is mujibe kulliye and salibi juz'iye or salibi kulliye, mujibe juz'iye. Okay? The next. Sometimes it is not tanaqud, it is tawad. They are opposite. They are opposite. They are not contradictory, they are opposite to each other. Tawad. And that is when they are both kulli, like the question that we had right now. Both kulli, but one mujibe and the other one is salibe. For example, Kullu insanin muta'ajjibun. Every human being gets surprised. Because as we said, animals apparently don't get surprised. Maybe except when they look at us. <laughs> but normally they don't get surprised. Okay. Because to be surprised means you have to have an anticipation of future. They don't have anticipation of future. Okay. So, Kullu insanin muta'ajjib. All human beings are surprised. Means they get surprised. They have the potential of being surprised. And no human being gets surprised. So they are both kulliye. But one of them is mujibe. One of them is salib. So, these are called mutawad. They are opposite to each other, but they are not contradictory. Do you know why they are opposite? Because they cannot both be true. Can both be true? No. When you say, كل إنسان متعجب, ليس إنسان متعجب, they cannot be both true. But they can both be false. Yes, and that is if some have this quality. If some have this quality, to say all of them have this quality is a problem, and you say none of them have this is also a problem. So this is called tawad. So in tawad, if one is true, the other is false. But from falsehood, you cannot say the other is true. Pardon? So, if there is tazat, there is opposition, it means they cannot both be true. But it's possible that both are false. So from truth of one, you understand the other is false. But from falsehood, you cannot say definitely the other one is true. If someone, you know, you have to be careful. You know, sometimes, for example, in the middle of discussion, someone says, all people are not like this. And you say, yes. Then he says, so all of them are like this. He say, no. We said all are not like this, but maybe some are like this, not all of them. So you cannot jump from salabiyya kulliyya to mujabiyya kulliyya. From salabiyya kulliyya, you can go only to mujabiyya juz'iyya. Okay? So this is called tawad. So 
they are both kulli, but one is mujabe, one is sadib. The third relation, dakhilan tahta tabat. Dakhilan tahta tabat. There are two propositions which are under opposition. Not in opposition, under opposition. What does it mean? It means that they are both juz'i. For example, بَعْضُ الْإِنسَانِ متعجب, بَعْضُ الْإِنسَانِ لَيْسَ بِمُتَعَجِّبْ Tazad was كُلُّ إِنسَان متعجب, لَيْسَ شَيْمِنَ الْإِنسَان Both were كُلِّ But here both are جُزْئِ So this كُلِّ under it is جُزْئِ This كُلِّ under it is جُزْئِ This is why they call it داخلان تحت التبار Okay? It's a just a name they created to make this, you know, it doesn't make any special sense. Da'khilan, I mean, they fall under those two, but they are separate, they are independent. So, if they are both kulli, but different in kaif, we call them mutabah. If they are both juz'i and different in kaif, we call them da'khilan taht at tabah Now, I want you to use your brain and answer, okay? If I say, some A is B, and some A is not B, from truth of one of them, can you understand the truth of the other one? No. From truth of one, can you understand the falsehood of the other one? No. From falsehood of one, can you understand the truth of other one? Yes. Because if this mujibe juziye or salabi juziye is not true, then you can understand the other one is true. If some A is B is wrong, then definitely some A is not B is right. Okay? So, from truth of one, you cannot understand the other one is true. Even you cannot understand the other one is false. But from falsehood of each of them, you understand the other one is true. Okay? In other words, they cannot be both false, but they can both be true. Is it clear? <laughs> like some animals are human beings, some animals are not human beings. It's okay. Both of them are true. And finally, the fourth is Tadakhul. Tadakhul means they overlap. And that is when there is similarity in kaif, means they are both mujabe or both salabe, but they have difference in kam, in quantity. For example, كل إنسان متعجب وبعض الإنسان متعجب كل إنسان متعجب وبعض الإنسان متعجب so they can both be true but they cannot both be wrong or they can be both wrong. What's the question? answer? Both can be also wrong. Like for example, I say, Kullu insanen hajar is wrong. Badul insanen hajar is also wrong. So both can be true like Kullu insanen haywan or Badul insanen haywan. Both can be wrong like Kullu insanen hajar or Badul insanen hajar. 
Okay? But if one is true, the other must be true as well. Ah. If one is true, depending which one is true. If Kulli is true, Juz is also true. But if Juz is true, Kulli is not necessarily true. Okay? Therefore, they only say when Kulli is true, Juz is true. Not vice versa. You understand? Because when kol A is B, definitely some A is B is also true. But if some A is B true, you cannot say definitely kol A is B true. Like Ba'zul Haywane and Son, but you cannot say Kullu Haywane and Son. So sometimes it can be that both of them are true, but sometimes only the Jews E is true. Yes, if Kulli is true, Jews is true. But if Jews is true, Kulli may not be true. Okay? So there are four types of relations between prepositions which have the same subject and the same predicate. They can be mutanaqid, and that is when they are completely different. One is salibi, the other is mujibi, one is kulliya, the other is juz'iya. Salibi kulliya and mujibi juz'iya. Or mujibi kulliya, salibi juz'iya. Yeah? This is mutanaqid. With respect to Mutanaqiz, uh, uh, no. no. one negative, ah, one positive, oh. one kulli, one juz'i. Oh. There can be two only options. Salabiyya kulliya, mujabiyya juz'iya, or mujabiyya kulliya, salabiyya juz'iya. Yes? yes. You can take this air with you, you know. <laughs> okay. The beauty of Mutanaqizain is, it's very straightforward. If one is true, the other is false. Or if one is false, the other is... So if you establish truth or falsehood of each of them, you definitely know that the other is opposite. Is it clear? If one of them is true, the other is false. If one is false, the other is true. So either you prove one or you disprove one, you can understand what's the situation with that rest. Then we have al mutawaddan al mutawaddan are both kulli. They are on the top. But one is mujabe, one is salibe. So mujabe ye kulli ye, salibe ye kulli. Certainly, they cannot both be true. So if one is true, the other is false. But they can both be false. You know, when you have mujabi kulliya and salibi kulliya, they cannot both be true. But they can both be false. Because maybe some of them have this quality, not all of them. For example, uh, if you say "kullu haywanan insan" is a problem, <laughs> if you say "laisa shay on min al haywan bi insan" is also a problem. Both of them are wrong. Okay, so in mutawaddan, if one is true, the other is false. But if one is false, maybe the other one is not true. Then we have داخلان تحت التباد. This was موجبه كلية صالبه كلية. Now موجبه جزئية صالبه جزئية. When you have موجبه جزئية صالبه جزئية, they can both be true. But they cannot both be false. So if one is false, the other one is true. But if one is true, the other one may be true or false. Okay? And then you have mutadakhilan, means each of them and the one below. Salabi kulliya, salabi juz'iya. Mujabi kulliya, mujabi juz'iya. Okay? So, 
تناقض is like this تناقض تضاد is this داخلان تحت تضاد is this متداخلان is like this so this is also the sign language <laughs> you can use so if there is موجبه کلی and موجبه جزئی or سالبه کلی سالبه جزئی this is called متداخلان what is the relation between them if kulli is true juz'i is true definitely but if juz'i is true kulli may not be true maybe true maybe not true we don't know yeah and if juz'i is false definitely kulli is false but you cannot say if kulli is false juz'i is false these are very rational. These are not things to memorize. These are things that you have to learn. Okay? Please study, do mubahisa. If you have any question, then study and do mubahisa again. <laughs> you don't need to ask me because it's very obvious. Okay. So, inshallah, we continue next week. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin.